Okay, Dr. Mindy Hare, and I want to speak directly today to those of you that are going through perimenopause and menopause. And I want to talk about fasting because this is such a common question that I'm getting over and over and over again. And I, if you know, if you if you're new to my videos, hopefully you know that I am a huge fasting fan. I also happen to be a 49-year-old woman who has been applying keto and fasting to myself through the perimenopause entering into the menopause years. So I really truly have firsthand experience with what the research is showing us. So today and why I chose to do this video today is I came across this article. I posted it in my resetter group. So if you're a resetter, um, hopefully you saw it in there. Um, and the title of the article is The Role of Therapeutic Fasting in Women's Health. And it's an overview. So what they did is they, they did a Google search on PubMed and Google Scholar, which are considered the places you would go to find the best research on fasting. And they analyzed all of the studies that they can find in there that, that um, showed up for one of these, one, two, three, four, five keywords. They looked at anything that showed women in diet, women in fasting, women in menopause, women in therapeutic fasting, and women's health. And what they found is off the hook for those of us that are going through these years. Just to kind of give you an overall picture, this is what they basically said in the, in the, in the article, is that fasting has shown to improve the reproductive, to both reproductive and mental health of women. It also prevents and obliterates cancer, musculoskeletal disorders, which are common in middle age and elderly women. So that was their general takeaway is, holy cow, fasting is really powerful for this age group. It's also really power for, par powerful for disease prevention. Now I wanna continue on because basically they went on to say that it specifically helps with treatment of rheumatoid or rheumatic diseases, chronic pain syndromes, hypertension, and metabolic syndrome. So what's metabolic syndrome? This is those of you that are going through these years and struggling with weight loss. Wait till you see the research that we're finding on what fasting can do for those of us going through these years. Um, another comment they had is that women, um, they're finding that women with nutritional de deficiencies and cancers what they're finding is that, th this is a quote from PubMed. I'm, uh, I'm gonna link this in here because every woman needs to know this. What they're finding is fasting is a missing link whose role in enhancing health of women needs to be continually evaluated. Meaning we've got a lot of new studies coming out, but we need to dive into this and understand it even more. So it, then the article goes on and it basically shows that fasting and cancer, they specifically said that the, the periodic fast mimicking, which we've talked a lot about, if you're not familiar with fast mimicking, go look at my other videos on it on, in YouTube, has been shown to decrease the risk factors and biomarkers related to cancer. Now, did you know, we talk a lot about breast cancer, do you know that 70% of breast cancers happen to women after they go through menopause? So fasting, fast mimicking specifically, is a really good idea if you wanna prevent cancer. It goes on to talk about PCOS. How many of you have PCOS? Turns out PCOS is the most common endocrine disorder in women. And that there, there was a study done that women with PCOS, when they fast, that they can reduce the chronic sympathetic overactivity of PCOS, and they reduce the neurohormone levels that will make sure that women are physically and more mentally healthy when battling PCOS. PubMed, right here, research, go please download this, take this to this article, to your OB, take it to your MD, have a really educated discussion with them. This is science, this is not fake news. Um, show them this video. This is, we gotta get this out to more people. Okay, what about musculoskeletal problem? How many of you have chronic pain situations? How many of you have osteoporosis? 
How many of you have rheumatoid arthritis? Well, let me tell you what the research shows. Fasting has shown to affect the parathyroid hormone secretion, which is thought to be beneficial for improving health, okay? It goes on to say osteoporosis and fractures from osteoporosis are a significant concern for the global community. Calorie restriction in a mode of fasting has been proven to potentially slow down the progression of osteoporosis. They also went on to say that it's slowing down the progression of cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, and obesity, all from fasting. Okay, but, but that's not it. Let's continue. Me fasting and metabolic health. There's a study that has resulted as confirmed that there's a cardio protective effect to intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is staying away from food 13 to 15 hours. And so what they're finding is that women in these years, perimenopause and menopause, what's happening is when they intermittent fast, they're not only losing weight, but they're reducing fat tissue uh, mass, their blood pressure is going down, their heart rate is improving, they're getting improvements in their lipid profile with a decrease in cholesterol and LDL and a significant increase in HDL. So how many of you heard, don't go on the keto diet, it's gonna cause your cholesterol to go up? Well, guess what? If just something simple like following keto with some of these longer fasts, you're getting that cardio protective benefit. And then perhaps, again, I'm speaking as a, as a 49 year old woman going through this process with you all, the mental health effects of fasting are off the hook. And not only, you know, those of you that have, have experienced it, you know, I mean, right now I, I'm at the end of my day. I've worked a 12 hour day. I haven't had anything to eat at all. I'm not hungry. I, I'm, my, my mental clarity is higher than it's been. My energy is higher than it was 12 hours ago. Okay. Mental health. Fasting improves self-esteem. It also has shown to reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression and it has improved social functioning. So how many of you, as you go through these years, are feeling anxious? How many of you are feeling depressed? How many feel like you withdraw? You don't wanna hang out with people as much? Well, if you start to insert fasting into your daily life, holy cow, you're gonna to start to see that your mental, uh, your mental social uh, effects of, fa uh, of fasting will dramatically improve. Okay, but that's not all. There's also many neurobiological mechanisms that have been proposed to describe that fasting has, will improve neurotransmitter production. Neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, make you happy. GABA relaxes you. It is also going to improve your sleep. And it's also shown to improve, uh, fasting is shown to have an effect on depressive symptoms improve your mood, alertness, and peacefulness. How many of you just wanna feel calm? Well, guess what? When you start to do fasting, put fasting in, the last line of this that I love is the fasting overall serves as a mental health enhancer. Okay, how many of you are going to, into your doctor and your doctor is saying, you're just, you're just going through menopause, you're just depressed, I'm just gonna put, you just need to go on an antidepressant. No, you don't. You need to learn how to fast. And once you learn how to fast, you get to tap into what science is showing us is the miracle that our body was created to be. So last thing, and I, don't, I could just, I'm like so excited about this, I could not wait to share it with you, is that their, their summary was that fasting can be prescribed as a safe medical intervention as well as a lifestyle re regime, which can improve a woman's, woman's health in many folds. Fasting is a non-pharmaceutical intervention that has been practiced since ancient times. And although the evidence favors its therapeutic effectiveness, hardly anybody in the modern era is using it as an intervention tool. What? Why? What? PubMed, thousands of research. So holy cow, if you're a woman and you are going through perimenopause and menopause and you are struggling, please start practice fasting. 
There are so many different ways to fast. Fasting doesn't have to mean that you just take food and water away and you suffer. Go watch my video on the seven different types of fasts. It's on YouTube. I don't know where you're watching this from, but you can go onto YouTube and watch it. Um, I have a group in Facebook called The Resetters where we do a fast once a month together and every Monday we do an all day fast together. So there is support there for you if you wanna learn more, if you wanna join a group that's already doing it. But please, if you're suffering with any depression, anxiety, if you're having challenges with your heart, osteoporosis, uh, your hormones, PCOS, uh, if you're struggling to lose weight, if you have cancer, if you wanna prevent cancer, there is a miracle and the miracle is called you. And nobody's taught you how to tap into this incredible healing power. When you take food out of the equation, the body heals and that is what this is proving. So if you want in my resetter group, just put resetters, we'll invite you in, we'll get you more information. I do believe to answer the question that I, that I put out there with this video, I do believe that women should cycle all of the different seven fasts. I believe that women should fast at different types, times of the month, depending on where she is in her cycle. I have a whole guide that I give women on that. If you want information on my women's uh, reset guide, just put women's reset guide in the comments and we'll get that to you where I show you when it's great to do keto and fasting and when it's great where you actually not need to not fast and you should be feasting more but don't give up on yourself, please. You were born in a miracle. You don't need to start at these years looking outside of yourself for health. It's all in you. It is right here. It's just waiting for you to learn fasting. So as always, I hope that helps.